So uh, Apple and the open web, a love story. I'm going to try to convince you in 10 minutes that Apple uh, is one of the great web companies in our industry and a great proponent of the open web. But first, a little bit of history. What's the difference between the iPhone and the Newton? Why is the iPhone such a phenomenal hit and the Newton, well, let's just say it wasn't? I'm going to say it's this. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. It's wireless networking. The internet in your pants, right? The Newton was ahead of its time. Just the fundamental premise of a thing like this that was roughly maybe cargo pant size that you could carry around with you because wireless internet hadn't been invented yet, or at least it wasn't everywhere. Uh, and so the only things you had in your Newton were what you put into it. And that's not interesting enough. The iPhone has everything in it because it has the internet in it. So Apple is a weird company to be talking about at a conference called Web 2.0 because they're not really a website company. Apple.com is a fine website, but it's not their product. It's a website where they promote and sell their actual products. So go back to Web 1.0, go back to the original web, and there's two technologies that at the beginning and all the way up to today are the fundamental technologies behind the web. I call them the HTs, HTML, HTTP. Apple, not a big HTML company. Like I said, their main products are not websites. They have things like MobileMe, which is a very, very nice, very clever, very well-designed, very elegant uh, web-based email contacts calendar. Uh, but they charge $100 a year for it. Imagine that, $100 charging for uh, web software. Uh, so it's, you know, by definition, just simply because they charge for it, it's not a huge hit. <clears throat> they launched two social networks this month, 2010, Ping and Game Center. And neither of them have a web browser interface. I mean, who else would do that other than Apple? But Apple is a huge HTTP company. Just look no further than the iTunes store. Everything they send out of there, every song, which is like, I don't know, a billion a year, uh, every movie, every TV show, every app that gets downloaded is sent over HTTP. So here's a definition for me. Just one guy with uh, 10 minutes at the conference, but I'll define Web 2.0. Web 1.0 was HTML in the web browser. Still around today. Web 2.0 is HTTP everywhere and Apple is all over that. So let's not forget the web browser. <clears throat> My favorite web browsers for the desktop for Mac and Windows uh, are Safari and Google Chrome, both of them using WebKit as the rendering engine. On mobile, I don't think there's any dispute that the dominant, preeminent rendering engine is WebKit. It's used by the iPhone. It's used by Android. It's used by BlackBerry. Uh, it's used by Palm's WebOS. It's even used by Nokia now. The one and only modern mobile platform that's not using WebKit for the mobile web browser is Microsoft's. WebKit comes from Apple. Free, open source, given away. It is used by all of their biggest competitors in the mobile space for free. Now, those of you with a, a sense of history, now, WebKit's a little bit old. I think Apple released it in 2003. We'll remember that it originated as a project called KHTML, uh, which Apple took and then built WebKit from. But KHTML was licensed with a, not to get in an open source discussion, but a liberal open source license, uh, such that Apple could take, take it, make a derivative product, keep it to themselves. They chose to open source their derivative WebKit. They were not required to. Why? I think two reasons. One, not to create a competitive advantage for themselves. They do that in many, many other ways. But to eliminate a competitive disadvantage. Prior to Safari, the Mac had many great things going for it, but it did not have a great web browser. 
Now in 2010, thanks to WebKit, it has several world-class, best-of-breed, you could argue with anybody that it's as good as the web browsers or any other platform web browsers. Two, consider the following situation. Imagine yourself as being in charge of a, a software project. And you have the resources to make one implementation. And the goal is to get this new app out to the biggest possible audience you can reach in the world. What platform do you choose? Used to be you chose Windows, and Apple was left out. Today, you choose the web, and Apple is included. It's a big difference, and a lot of that is thanks to WebKit. So I want to disabuse you of the notion that this sort of you know, made-up Venn diagram represents Apple's view of the web, that they've got iOS, and it's in opposition to, or different from, or opposed to the web. I think something like this is a more accurate diagram, that the web is part of iOS. Now, we can quibble over the size of the circles because there's millions and millions of websites and only hundreds of thousands of iOS apps. So if you want to, we could draw it this way. But either way, I think Apple sees the web as a part of iOS. And when you draw it this way, it looks like an even bigger part. So there's a, a notion out there that the future is web app only, or that at least in certain contexts, all you need are web apps. Uh, about two years ago, Mike Arrington, who writes TechCrunch, came up with the idea for this thing called the Crunchpad. He was like, if I'm on my couch, why can't I just have like a 10-inch, 11-inch touchpad? I don't need a whole stack of software. I don't need a whole operating system. Just give me a browser. I just want a browser on a touchscreen. Sort of the same basic premise between Google's Chrome OS. All you need is a browser, right? Well, if you wanted to do that today, if you wanted to leave this room, not right after me, there's a, a couple other speakers, but after this event, go out and buy something that just does the brow browses the web, what's the best thing you could buy? I say the best thing you could buy is the iPad, if all you want to do is browse the web. You could even set it up like this. Move the other icons off the screen, right? It would be a great tablet that does exactly what those guys said, just runs web apps. But nobody buys an iPad and sets it up like this. Nobody. I guarantee you there's nobody out there with an iPad that's set up like this. Because those other apps, the native apps for the iPad, are great too. So what if the premise of those guys, of this notion that web apps are the future, or at least web apps are all you need, what if the premise is only half right? And it's half right in that you really do only need web apps, but half wrong in the idea that web apps, by definition, run within a browser window. Right? Let me look at my iPhone quick, because I can't remember them all. But here's the apps that I use the most that are right on my home screen. Calendar, syncs to the web. Maps, gets data from uh, Google's Maps website. YouTube, gets uh, data from YouTube website. Simple Note, great online note-taking app, syncs to the web. MyCast, weather, gets it from the web. Flickr, post to Flickr. Mint, that's where I get my web stats from during Fireball. Twitter, I'm in this app all the time. How can you say that Twitter, even though it's a native iPhone app, isn't really a web app? Foursquare, how is that? How is the Foursquare iPhone app not a web app? Just because it's not written in HTML, I say it doesn't mean it's not a web app if it's not about HTTP. So that leaves us with the App Store. And then the one thing that gives the heebie-jeebies to people who worry about the idea of the iOS being in opposition to the web is Apple's control over the App Store. So what happens if it's right that these native apps are a better experience? And what happens if developers stop building open HTML browser apps that run anywhere and focus only on writing native apps for app stores like Apple's, uh, Google's, Amazon's, which is apparently coming? And then all of a sudden, the web is controlled. It's a disaster, right? It's not going to happen. It's a, it's a false dilemma. Because for all of the explosive growth that we've seen in the last three years in mobile app development, the iPhone and Android uh, especially, web app development hasn't slowed at all. 
So I think mobile is the best thing that's ever happened to the web. I say the iPhone is the best thing that's ever happened to mobile. And so that's my argument that Apple is a great web company. Thank you very much.